This happy little girl we're looking at uh, is an eight-year-old named Dorit Oppenheim. And her smile and this photograph represents the selflessness of parental love. This photo was taken of Dorit just before she's leaving her home in the German town of Kassov, and she is being sent from Nazi Germany, where life has become increasingly difficult and intolerable for German Jews, and she is leaving for Scotland as part of a movement called the Kinder Transport. The Kinder Transport was an organized uh, emigration of thousands of German and Austrian Jewish children to safety in the United Kingdom. Their parents were not allowed to come. During this period of time, so many doors were closed to refugees, um, mostly on economic grounds, the idea that during the Great Depression, it was too threatening to have foreigners come in, that they might take jobs. But there was also suspicion of foreigners generally and anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, that made most countries unwilling to take in Jewish refugees. But in this case, Scotland and other countries in Great Britain opened their doors to some children as long as they would come without their parents. And Dorit's parents took that leap of faith. They said, we love our child so much that we are willing to let her go, to send her off, not knowing if we will ever see her again, but hoping that it will keep her safe from this stranglehold that we feel closing in around us. And so in 1939, Dorit, in her dress and her big hat and her big smile, goes off to Scotland, um, as the saying goes, into the arms of strangers, her parents hoping that someone will love her and care for her. And they never saw her again. They sent her away, and she survived the war in safety, uh, but her parents did not have the same luck. And after this sacrifice, uh, they themselves fell victim to a fate they could not know was coming, but that they uh, feared something terrible would happen. And they themselves were deported to the Auschwitz killing center and were murdered there. So Dorit went on to live a healthy life, but she was orphaned. Um, but she survived because of her parents' desperation to get her to uh, a refuge, to a safe place, uh, and also their selflessness, that they loved her enough to let her go. I think we see in the face of Dorit and the thousands and thousands of other refugee children uh, from the 1930s, from the period of the Holocaust, the fact that children are so often caught up in these situations, not of their own making, but are victims of it. Their childhoods are stolen at the very minimum, and then lives are lost. And I look at my own country, at the United States, and I look back at our history from this period, and it's a history of failure. Our doors were closed to almost all who were seeking um, a, a safe place to land. They were closed because of hatred, because of racism, because of hatred of Jews, of Asian people, of people who look different or practiced a different religion. And in fact, we didn't have a refugee policy here in the United States until after World War II. There was no separate category for people fleeing violence or seeking asylum. You just were part of the regular immigration line. And so I hope, and part of why we tell this history, is not just to make people sad or to see who was the lucky one and who was the unlucky one, but how can we do better? What do we as a, a world community and as nations and individuals owe people who life has dealt a terrible hand where it could have been us in place of them? And how do we want to change how we behave? When are we selfish and when are we selfless? And when do we uh, open our hearts and open our doors? So unfortunately, we have seen many, many other refugee situations. I expect we will see them for the rest of my life. But I hope that learning the specifics of these stories and putting faces and names to these people help us to remember what the consequences are when we stand idly by and do nothing. That is a choice.